Greetings, unsettled souls. <clears throat> Welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks. Now, uh, for those of you that don't know, there is the high-def version, which is now normally going on The Media Speaks. And then there is the lower-quality version, which is this camera. This camera over here goes live. This camera takes a minute to render because it's high-def. Um, so if I look like I'm looking in two different places, uh, that's why. Uh, if you catch it live, uh, go to the Media Speaks. If you don't catch it live, go to the MediaSpeaks.com and find it because it's going to be a little more clear. Um, I, I'm doing it this way because Google never wants to work properly, and I was driving our poor editor crazy. So I've just started posting the live version on my site. Um, anyway, do me a favor, share the video. It matters that you're here, not necessarily which version you're watching. I'm going to go on to this. I want to give a shout out to Melissa, Mount, Melissa Melton at uh, truthstreammedia.com. I invited her on to the show to talk about her article, but she thinks the show sucks and didn't want to show up. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She's very, very busy. But um, I wanted to give a shout out to her because other than Skinny Puppy themselves, who I am uh, friends with on Facebook, she was the first to report on this. Um, I'm going to source two other articles along with hers. Um, for those of you that don't know, I love the band Skinny Puppy. If you like uh, more mellow, laid-back music with a rock edge, look up Candle. If you like the more metal sound, look up Tin Omen. And if you like uh, industrial music, look up Paragon or, uh, um, oh, I don't know what's it, Love in Vain. Um, they are an amazing band, and uh, it's very good to hear when one of your favorite bands do something that's absolutely wonderful which is what's happening here. There's two articles I'm going to get to right in a row. Uh, why Skinny Puppy asked Gitmo to pay up and uh, industrial band Skinny Puppy bills DOJ for using its music as a torture device. Uh, that's InfoWars, Adam Salazar, and the uh, first one is Al Jazeera. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to Al Jazeera first. A lot of them are covered in all three articles. But the uh, new Al Jazeera one, I think, went the most in-depth because it was written by the person that caused it to happen. So uh, well, I'm doing that backwards. I'm going to change my own idea. This is the original article. Then I'm going to give you the uh, backlog on it. Again, uh, this goes out to Adam Salazar. And again, almost uh, even, even faster than InfoWars was Melissa Melton at Truth Stream Media. Industrial band Skinny Puppy is billing the U.S. Justice Department after finding out that their tunes were used as a means of torturing detainees at the Guantanamo Bay Detention Facility in Cuba. The band recently invoiced the DOJ for $666,000 requesting royalties to be paid for unauthorized use of their music. We thought that we would invoice them properly, so we hit them with the evil numbers of 666,000. Keyboardist and founder Kevin Key told Tampa Tribune, we gave them a breakdown of the bill. I also invited uh, DJ Aram of Passing Time to be on the show. He had the best, best ever. We went to this club that my friend used to own in Cleveland. Uh, it was after the Ogre Show, which is the gentleman that sings for Skinny Puppy. My brother's favorite band is Rammstein. He was 16 years old. I managed to pull some strings, got him to be allowed in, as long as, of course, he didn't drink, and he didn't. Um, as soon as he walked in the bar, his favorite band, Rammstein, is playing. He dances to them, promptly walks off stage, comes over, and starts talking to Nivik Ogre and the aforementioned Kevin Key. That was his first nightclub experience. His favorite band danced to, followed by meeting Skinny Puppy. So, uh, you know, he's like uh, 29 now, and he'll never beat that club experience. Uh, members of the Canadian Experimental Electro-Industrial Group, it goes on, say they're not only aggravated that their music was used without permission, but they also are against torture in general. We never supported any of those types of scenarios, Keith said, because we make unsettling music. <clears throat> we can see it being used in a weird way, but it doesn't sit right with us. In an interview with the Phoenix New Times last month, Key said that the news made him feel not too good. We heard through a very a reliable grapevine, which I'm going to get to in a minute, that our music was being used in Guantanamo Bay prison camps to musically stun and or torture people, Key said. 
What really bothers us is that they played our songs at an intolerable volume for hours on end. And that's important to note. I heard this in the 90s, um, that... See, your music you like is so abrasive that you can use it for torture. And bonehead. What they do is they, uh, they, they turn it up to the point of absolute uh, noise level and then crank it. And since industrial bands and metal bands tend to not sound good, uh, so tend to sound worse at that volume than, say, uh, Willie Nelson would with an acoustic guitar, and then they go ahead and use this kind of music. It says the guards would ridicule the detainees uh, when they defecated or urinated upon themselves. How can there be a torture camp there? It's wrong. We found out all about this over a year ago, and it just ticked us off, Key told the Tribune. It's called musical torture. So I'm going to go on into uh, what their reliable source was. Um, and this is, again, Al Jazeera. Um, this is really interesting. I'm going to be reading this for a minute because uh, th this gentleman did something amazing. He used to work at Guantanamo Bay, and he had to be in charge of the one who did the torturing uh, to the deta detainees uh, using music and beating and all kinds of things. So um, I'm going to skip the beginning of this just because I just gave it to you. Um when I began looking back at 2008, it had been more than four, four years since I had left Guantanamo, and I was more unhappy than I had been while I was there, torturing and abusing presumably innocent men in the name of freedom and security. My guilt and remorse for my actions had grown to such a degree that I no longer wanted to live and no longer wanted to remember their screams and cries. Willing to do anything to get Gitmo out of myself, I reached out to Cage Prisoners, that's an organization in the United Kingdom that provides information about the Guantanamo detainees, why they were there, where they came from, and other biographical details revealing that these men were human too. The group was more than willing to interview me, it says, and ask me every question that occurred to them about my experience at Guantanamo. So he, I'm going to cut, cut to the chase here, he moved on and started speaking mostly to Muslims about this, much like preaching to the choir. And um, it says, Skinny Puppy is an industrial group based in Vancouver, British Columbia. They've been the soundtrack to my life. Good taste in music, my friend. Unbeknownst to them, I had heard their music while I was at Gitmo. Their songs, which I'm pretty sure came from a bootleg called Heaven's Trash, which I'm going to immediately try to get, were used as a musical score to torture <clears throat> in sessions conducted by the intelligence agents, one of whom was a hulking fellow who they nicknamed Ogre. Uh, they, uh, the, it's interesting because that's also the singer of Skinny Puppy's stage name. I had always found refuge and joy in Skinny Puppy's music, even though it makes for difficult listening. There are really no easy ways to describe the band to someone who is not a fan, or at least familiar with the genre of industrial music. But their songs are characterized by relentless drum beats, panicked convulsive riffs, synth samples, and, musics, and music that call out corporate wrongdoing. While I respect the author, let me redefine that, because I think he described half of their catalog. Skinny Puppy is a band that uses keyboards and computers and samples to go against the corporate, uh, corporate greed. Sometimes they are very abrasive. Sometimes they are so mellow as you could almost fall asleep to. They are a band that has musical structure unlike anybody else. And um, I think that's a better description. They're not always relentless drum beats, but I guess if you only listen to Tin Omen. I'm going to go on. The songs I heard at Gitmo were heavily distorted, almost to the point of inaudibility. Even so, I would never have imagined that Skinny Puppy's music would or could be used to torture. I told Ogre, the torturer, that I knew Skinny Puppy and asked him why he'd chosen them. He was enthused that someone knew the band, uh, but he made a point of telling me how effective their music was for torture. He was happy to use something that I sought refuge in as a form of torture to these men. And it mentions that he took it quite personally and he contacted Skinny Puppy. While some research and diligent phone calls and emails, I was able to reach Skinny Puppy's manager who relayed the message to the band. After some initial conversation, uh, Ogre agreed to meet him. Uh, it says, I like to think that I was as, 
nervous as the event as Ogre seemed to be when he began speaking to me, since he was the singer for my favorite band ever. I wondered how receptive he would be to the information I had to share with him. If he cared that Skinny Puppy's music was being used to scare and mentally distress the men there, or God forbid, if he would be proud of what I was telling him. Appreciating that the time I had together was limited and valuable, I jumped in headfirst, it says, and asked Ogre if he was familiar with Guantanamo. It mentions in here that he was. So he went on to tell them exactly what was being done with their music and how it was being used. Um, it says, I spent 2012 engaging in discussions with the public, self-publicizing a memoir of my experience and speaking to the media about Guantanamo. All the while, I was wondering when Skinny Puppy would finally publicize the information that I had shared with them. Come May 2013, they did just that, releasing their album Weapon, which I can only say is amazing. Paragon is the most amazing song we've done in ages. It's so good. The album was only a precursor to the invoice they planned to send the Department of Defense for using their music for such a heinous purpose without permission of them to do so. I felt a real sense of accomplishment after Skinny Puppy embarked on their 2014 tour and sent off the invoice for 666000 to the Department of Defense. I had set out alone in 2009 to reach the American people, and now in 2014 I am part of an ongoing effort of people who are trying to make a difference in the world that we live in. That is wonderful news, wonderful to hear about an amazing band, and I absolutely wanted to cover that. Um, look up their music if you don't know, but it's good to see, um, because I, I love industrial music. It's very good to see the, uh, the lies, Rammstein told you to kill people. No, they did not. Um, it's good to see electronic metal music even getting uh, positive light recently. And let's not forget, uh, it was all the pop weenie babies like, uh, Katy Perry and all those other morons that put on a satanic performance at the Grammys. Metallica and Nine Inch Nails sang songs of peace. All right, friends, Mikhail Thalen, PrisonPlanet.com. Scientists confirmed Fukushima radiation in California kelp. If you looked at the title of this posting, I had mentioned that it was going to be all about weapons. Uh, obviously, the first, uh, first story, Skinny Puppy CD, is called Weapon. And now we have the weapon of lies, and that is what GE, which is TEPCO, brings to your life. Uh, again, this was going to be no threat, right? Fukushima was no big deal, right? Scientists analyzing kelp, and I mentioned on the massive Fukushima update uh, just a few weeks prior. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I do it once a month, and then pepper other reports about Fuku throughout the month. Um... I mentioned that they were going to test the kelp. Well, let's see what they found, shall we? They analyzed it off the coast of San Diego, and they confirmed the presence of cesium this week, a radioactive device that hope directly linked to the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. Part of the ongoing Kelp Watch 2014 project, government and academic institutions have begun receiving results from samples of bull kelp and giant kelp collected along the California coast. Despite attempts by the media to downplay the ongoing disaster, the discovery has only confirmed the continued buildup of radiation in West Coast waters. That would be California for you weekend fans. We're trying to figure out how much is there and how much is getting into the ecosystem, said Dr. Matthew Edwards, a professor from San Diego State University. Things are linked a little more closely than sometimes we'd like to think. Just because it is one of the on the other side of the world doesn't mean that it doesn't affect us. Try getting that into the boneheads in America. It's almost impossible to do. And once again, uh, it looks like my live feed is experiencing difficulties. Yeah, why? Because it's Google. That's why. Let's make sure it's yeah, good. Okay, it's back on again. Although scientists claim the levels of cesium are safe, the public's distrust has only grown given the government's continued denial of other issues related to radiation. That would be almost everything. If their mouth is moving, they're lying. That's a really good way to tell. Um, currently, more than 70 U.S. sailors involved in the USS Ronald Reagan and 2011 Fukushima rescue efforts have been stricken with ailments such as brain tumor, thyroid cancer, and leukemia. Of course, according to TEPCO, it is the absolutely safe kind of brain tumors, safe thyroid cancer, and the ever safe nothing to worry about leuke leukemia, which is blood cancer. 
Despite the clear connection to Fukushima, the federal government has continued to deny any link. Yeah, of course. Uh, young sailors always get brain cancer and blood cancer and thyroid cancer. Of course, happens every day to the youth. Following the recent discovery of radiation levels over 1,400% the normal level on a California beach, and we reported on that last, last month, that's another reason, we have sea stars disintegrating and everything else, and of course now we have the kelp right off the coast of the U.S., deadly poison. If you don't know how bad cesium is, look it up. Um, if you do know, um, a good analogy for other metal industrial music fans, there's a band that writes about very dark topics. Their name is Cesium-137. Do you ever notice bands pick names like Obituary and Death and all these crazy names and spooky st Do you know why they do that? Nope, now I've got to reconnect because my connection was lost. I really despise Google in ways that nobody could ever possibly understand. Anyway, I'm going to go on for you high-def people. Um, they've lied about everything in regards to this, and now we have literally deadly, deadly radioactive kelp and everything else. So, I mean... If you're one of the people that foolishly eat a, a kelp or whatever because you think it makes you healthy, take selenium instead. Selenium is what is in uh, seaweed and kelp that is so beneficial to you. Friends, if you're in Canton, Ohio, do me a favor and go to the Arcadia Grill. It's located in downtown Canton on Court Avenue. The reason I want you to do that is you will be experiencing one of the best dining experiences you've ever had. They've got delicious stuff. Steaks. They've got uh, seafood. I I love the ravioli myself. If you're a Red Sauce fan, it's a home run. Um, today I had a shot of rum and coke that was made so weak I thought I was drinking a glass of coke. Um, if you don't want that to happen, go to the Arcadia Grill. They know how to mix a drink. Uh, let them know Sam from the Correct Views sent you there. Friends, this is from RT. Afghanistan accuses U.S. of killing women. Seven children in airstrike. Uh, needless to say, why that has made our uh, our uh, weapon story. Afghan President Hamid Karzai has strongly condemned the U.S. strike that killed seven children and a woman in central Afghanistan on Tuesday night, emphasizing that American troops once again acted against all mutual agreements between the states. Well, let's not forget that they're also allowing... Uh, uh, Islamist fascists in there in, in droves. Uh, do I think we should go back? No, I do not. Um, as a result of the bombardment by American forces last night in Shaihagur district of Parwan province, one woman and seven children were martyred and one civilian injured, a statement from Karzai's office uh, cited in AFP. The issue of civilian casualties has been very sensitive in relations between the U.S. and Afghanistan. Well, let's not forget that the U.S. is using metadata to um, carry off a lot of these strikes. Well, what we found out is that terrorists are using other people's phones calling terrorist organizations and then our government is blowing up the person that loaned the phone to them because they think that that person is in contact with terrorists. That is why, as Ron, Rand Paul has said, and those of you know, I might not even be voting for Rand. He pisses me off more and more every day. Um, I used to be a big supporter. But that is why Rand Paul correctly said that this is a very bad idea. Um, it's very obvious. Just because you have the weapon doesn't mean you're using it on the right person at the right time. Uh, WashingtonExaminer.com uh, crime study. Handguns, not assault rifles used in most mass shootings. No, Sam, it's not true. All you skinny puppy fans dress up in black makeup and take your assault rifles and start killing our children and eating aborted babies. B.S. Media hype about mass shootings in America has fostered a myth that the killings are on the rise and that an assault weapon ban, expanded background checks, and greater attention to the mentality ill will curb a rampaging epidemic, according to an authoritative and exhaustive study of a noted criminologist. Instead, according to James Allen Fox, author and criminology professor at Northern Western, Northwestern University, 
mass shootings have remained stagnant over 34 years. That means they didn't go up for you Lady Gaga fans. Averaging 20 a year. And few were committed by the type of berserk psychos portrayed in the media. A lot of it's gang killings. Uh, the hood culture. Because you want to be hood. Public disclosure is grounded in myth and misunderstanding about the nature of the offense and people who perpetuate it. He writes in the journal Homicide Studies. He added, without minimizing the pain and suffering of hundreds of those who have been victimized in recent attacks, the facts clearly say that there has been no increase in mass shootings and there is certainly no epidemic. The study debunks several proposals aired by the Dalt President Obama, the Dalt Vice President Joe Biden, and Senate Democratic Dalts after the December 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting aimed at stopping mass killings. While he said any plan is worth trying, he concluded that sort of abolishing the Second Amendment, there is little that can be done. Mass murder may just be the price we pay for living in a society where personal freedom is highly valued. Um, the rarest form of mass murder is a completely random attack. And here are some myths, 10 myths about weapons on our weapons show here. Um, these are the key among the 10, my, my, my bad. Mass shootings are on the rise. He used FBI statistics and found that they have averaged in 20s per year, rarely going over 25. So there's one myth. Video games play a role. Not only do the skinny puppy fans go out and start killing children, but those video gamers, it's those violent video games, ought not. The study found no link between video games and expanded violence and blamed the media and lawmakers for using the entertainment industry as a convenient scapegoat. But we do it for the children. Profiling will help catch killers before they act. False. The study found that most are white and about 30 years old characteristics that are fairly prevalent in the general society. Yes, you would think so. Expanded background checks will stop killers from getting guns, right? No. The study cites a study from former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg's Mayors Against Illegal Guns that found that 93 recent mass shootings, the gun buyers didn't have a criminal nor mental health record. 93%, that is the majority, obviously. People cannot be denied their Second Amendment rights just because they look strange or act in an odd manner. But Sam, you look strange and act in an odd manner. Yeah, and I've never shot any children. An assault weapons ban would work. How about that one? Nah, false. They found that the typical weapon used is in fact a pistol, not an assault weapon like a semi-automatic AR-15 rifle. That's mostly people in the hood. Assault weapons were used in 24.6% of mass shooting, handguns in 47.9, and limiting the size of magazines weapons can carry wouldn't help, they said, because any ban would impact new sales and there is an ample supply of large capacity magazines already in circulation. So there are some myths about weapons here on our weapons show. Um, how about this? Tennessee bill would shut down the NSA spy center, the weapon of water. Uh, how many times have you heard that the uh, powers that be were going to use water rationing against us? How about we use water rationing against them? PJ Dub, Paul Joseph Watson, InfoWars, legislators in Tennessee have introduced a bill that would ban the state from providing water and electricity to the NSA data center, which is currently involved in building supercomputers designed to crack encrypted data. Thank God and all the saints. The Fourth Amendment Protection Act, which mirrors legislation introduced by other states, which prohibit local and state agencies from, quote, providing material support to any federal agency claiming the power to authorize the collection of electronic data or metadata of any person pursuant to any action not based on a warrant, end quote. The bill also desensitizes local companies from doing business with the NSA. Basically, it takes a whole lot of water to run this spying agency, and Tennessee's working to deny them the water to do it. This is how we fight back, people. Two more stories in quick succession. Steve Watson writes in InfoWars, 
suspension lifted for imaginary bow and arrow child. I am going to be bringing back the dunce cap of the month. I don't have a printer. I don't have any way to get things printed. I'm backed up. I'm going to be sending out 20 dunce caps at one time. And it's going to be very, very expensive. So please donate uh, to the correct views at hotmail.com if you can. I'm unbelievably behind. But those of you that follow it know that I mentioned uh, as not a winner... But a runner-up, these idiots that tried to uh, bother this poor 10-year-old boy for an imaginary bow and arrow. What a deadly weapon. Shazam, Sparky, let's, let's bust him. Um, I'm going to go into this because, again, this is why we do what we do. It's why I'm speaking into a camera. We got it turned around. A suspension, I might add, wrongly handed to a 10-year-old child from Pennsylvania school for miming the action of firing an arrow into an imaginary bow has been rescinded following protests headed by the Civil Liberties Group. Never mind what the correct views did, because we're invisible and we never get any credit. The Rutherford Institute at Watchdog Group intervened last month in the case of Johnny Jones, a fifth grader at Southeastern Middle School in Fongrove, PA, who found himself in trouble after violating the school's zero tolerance law policy, excuse me, policy on weapons by miming the action using only his hands. According to school officials, Jones was in class when a classmate held up his folder like an imaginary gun and shot at him as he was retrieving a pencil from the teacher. When Jones drew back the strings on his imaginary bow and shot back, the girl in the class alerted the teacher and one thing led to another. That girl will grow up to later be recall later be called what uh, many people refer to as itch with a B at the beginning. <laughs> uh, the school principal suspended Jones, contacted the boy's parents, and threatened expulsion for making a threat at another student using the replica or representation of a firearm, uh, and they because they don't use their brains when they write the rules. Following a face-to-face -face meeting with Jones' mother, arranged by attorneys on both sides, the school director has now agreed to remove the suspension from the boys' record. Um, and this is great. Um, Representative Sally Kern of Oklahoma, another hero, recently introduced the Common Sense Zero Tolerance Act. Um, in her state, she wants uh, actions to be protected, which include brandishing a pastry or other food which is partially consumed in such a way that the remnant resembles a weapon. Possession of a toy weapon which is five inches or less. Possession of a toy weapon made of plastic or wood snapped together building blocks. Using a finger or a hand to st simulate a weapon. Vocalizing imaginary weapons or firearms. And lastly, wearing articles of clothing or accessories that support or advance the Second Amendment's rights or organizations. Isn't it the same shame that we even have to talk about something that's stupid? All right, guys, that brings me to the dunce of the day. It's real simple, guys. I, as soon as I read it, I knew exactly what it was going to be. The smoking dun got... The smoking dumb.com. No, the smoking gun.com for a dumb person. A man charged in Amish buggy drive-by shooting. It's so stupid I can barely read it. February 12th, police today announced charges have been filed against a Pennsylvania bonehead in connection with the fatal drive-by shooting of a horse pulling an Amish buggy. How do you shoot a horse? Uh, and it's a story for Christelle. Uh, Timothy Antonio Diggs, 22, is facing seven misdemeanor counts, including reckless endangerment, cruelty to animals, and firing into an occupied vehicle according to the East Lampeter Township Police Department. The horse was pulling a buggy with five family members around 9 p.m. on November 24th when an unknown type car traveling north passed the buggy. The buggy's occupants, a married couple and their three young children, told investigators that they heard a loud noise described as sounding like a firecracker as the vehicle passed. I'll tell you what, they're Amish, and I, I do believe that while they are pacifists, um, some Amish are a little more liberal than others. Some of them believe in self-defense, and uh, most of them own a weapon for other reasons. Damn lucky you even had your life there, jerk. Upon returning to their farm, the family discovered that the horse had been shot in the chest. The animal died before a veterinarian reached the family's residence. The, the horse got them home, for crying out loud. Diggs, who wins the dunce of the day by a long shot, 
Uh, seen in the above mugshot, it says, has been jailed since cops executed a search warrant at his home in early December. During that raid, officers located handguns in a motorcycle that had been stolen in separate burglaries. I'm going to steal a motorcycle, then I'm going to shoot somebody's horse and put the motorcycle on my property. Bonehead! Idiot, idiot, idiot! I live in a country full of idiots! Police did not disclose whether one of the seized guns was used in the horse killing, nor did they reveal a motive for the shooting. Oh, Wilbur, we're getting shot at. Friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I. B. DeGange uh, signing off. Uh, God bless, friends. And make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. We are always posting. Um, please donate to me if you can, the, media, uh, the Correct Views at Hotmail.com. And uh, make sure you hit share. That does wonders for me. If you hit the remix button on YouTube, it'll post my video on your channel. And then everybody that follows you will also get my news. And that would be a huge help. Good night, friends. God bless.